All right, and welcome. So previously I did a video called uh, Dual Sports Suck Just Buy a Dirt Bike. And in this video, we're gonna talk about Dirt Bike Suck Just Buy a Dual Sport. And for the purists and uh, the, the comment warriors, yes, this is technically the Supermoto. Uh, the only difference between this and the S version is the damn rims and the fork. So, Dual Sport, all right? It's a dual sport for all intents and purposes for this video. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so previously I talked about how I got into dual sporting. I got into off-roading by getting a uh, DR650. And I would get that DR650 stuck constantly. And I really wanted something lighter. So I'm gonna continue the story. So I bought this bike, rode it around for a while, tried to learn how to do wheelies, and I suck at wheelies. We'll do a couple wheelies later, but, um, and I still, this thing wasn't light enough for me because I was trying to keep up with motor, uh, I was trying to keep up off-road with my friends who had motocross bikes. Sierra 450, um, you know, RMZ, or RM250, two-stroke, you know. I was trying to keep up with them, and, you know, I could only do what I could do with the 17 inch rims and tires. Um, I did put 17 inch uh, knobbies on here at one point and they did great for what they were but it's this it still wasn't it was still 17 inch knobbies they were terrible trying to keep up with uh, an RM250 and a CR450 you know pure race dirt bikes right. I got frustrated very frustrated and I was like screw this I'm gonna just go ahead and buy an off-road bike and that's when I started looking around I was like I want the baddest off-road bike money can buy straight up and that's how I ended up with my two-stroke and it was terrifying way fast and light so uh, I rode that around for a long while I've done many videos on it it's been almost almost a year since I bought it getting there it's getting close uh, well, there's more to this story. After a while, after realizing that, hey, going crazy stupid fast off-road is fun, but it's not all it's cracked up to be all the time, um, I started to miss this. I took it out on a ride one time, and the battery was dead. I had to jump start it. The, uh, the odometer, the, the computer here was freaking out. It didn't like it. So I bought another battery for it and uh, I started riding it around without recording. Well, the more and more I rode it, uh, the more and more I realized that, well, shit, maybe, maybe I might have been wrong this whole time. I really missed this bike. I really missed this bike for this reason. The fact that this is plated completely street legal and still very capable off-road it's a very big plus. Now, keep in mind when I say this, the cruiser that I just recently got is very sentimental because it's my father's and it's a project to get it running. But if it wasn't my father's, if it was just a normal cruiser, and somebody asked me if I had to get rid of the cruiser, the DRZ, and the KTM, if I had to get rid of two of the three and only have one bike, which would I get rid of? And which would I keep? Well, the truth is the DRZ. I would keep the DRZ. Which brings me to one of my next points of this bike is the ability to just go somewhere, ride out, and explore. And uh, that's what we're gonna do today. Um, there should be a trail around here somewhere that I vaguely remember. I don't know how well this is gonna work out. I know there's some mud puddles and stuff. We might have to avoid that, but here we go. The other reason why dual sports are better than dirt bikes, because I rode legally here uh, on the road, had a nice ride on the road, and here I am, hitting a trail in the woods. Oh yeah, we're gonna. There's no way we're gonna get through that. We're gonna do the the bypass. Slicks are not very good for this kind of stuff, but you know what? Who cares? This is fun. It's been a long while since I've actually been able to uh, go do this. The front is definitely uh, weaving and bobbing a lot. Uh, I'm going to have to stand up to center my gravity here because there's a lot going on with the front tire being a slick. This is not <laughs> working out very good. But um, here's, you know, 
And yes, technically on my XCW, I plated it and I could have done this. But let's say this trail was like uh, an hour and a half away, right? You really want to drive your 300 two-stroke at highway speeds that long? That's, uh, that's very um, sketch to the engine and I don't care what anybody says. You drive a two-stroke on the road at constant speeds on a highway and uh, you're going to blow it up. You're going to seize it because that's not what it was meant for. Um, and, you know, I could probably be going about 40, 45 miles an hour through here on the 300, but this is still fun because the challenge of being able to get back here, you know, keep it upright, get back here, that's, it's a lot of fun. Now here's the interesting spot. This used to be some jumps. And I don't know how this is going to go on slicks. So we're not really going to hit them. You know, for being a heavy, heavy uh, carbureted bike, this thing sounds freaking nice. Oh yes. I actually wonder how quickly I can get through here on slicks. I am bobbing and weaving everywhere. Uh, brakes don't work. <laughs> brakes don't work. Brakes don't work. <laughs> Almost dumped it there. That's funny. Here I'm going to have to give my conclusion to the whole thing. Um, each bike has its own purpose. If you want something to rip off-road, get a dirt bike. If you want something that'll do everything, get a dual sport. KTM, Europe, European bikes, KTM and them, they've come a long way. The, uh, the 500, 350, 450, 500 series by KTM, the Husky. KTM Husky, same bike. You know, they're, they're dirt bikes that have been transformed into dual sports. And they still have a lot more maintenance than a DRZ or a WR. And yeah, they're light. They're, they're probably, what, 250, 245, 250 pounds. And they got, I think the uh, 500 has 60, 62 horsepower or something like that. Which is amazing for 250 pounds. It's, it's a killer bike. Um, it really is. But if you're going to buy a dual sport and, let's say, um, go from one end of the country to the other, uh, me personally, I'd rather have a WR or a DRZ because um, they're very popular. Um, there's, there's parts that are going to be readily available. You know, so it really all depends. It, you know, everything depends on this, that, and the other. Everything's a compromise in one direction or the other. Uh, and dual sports are right there, dead smack in the middle. Um, you can do it this way or you can do it this way. Um, whichever you want. But you can't do it this way and then expect it to be over here like king of off-road, you know. Um, and that's really the truth of it. Everybody who's commented on this video and my previous video, thank you for your comments. You know, and when I do these videos, I'm not always right. So, like, for instance, if you feel I was wrong and you voiced it, you're not in the wrong unless you cussed me. You know, if I say something that you don't like and you... Uh, and you say, hey, I, I don't like that or I don't agree with that. You know, that's perfectly fine with me. But anyways, um, I've had an issue lately with people cussing me. And I think I'm going to have to start banning people when, when, you, when you start typing cuss words. It's unfortunate, but I'm going to have to. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, again, if you haven't seen uh, Dual Sports Suck by Dirt Bike, go watch that video. Um... And like I said, I'm going to do a response video here shortly. In the meantime, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll do a, I'll release another cruiser video where we're working on a cruiser. I'm not sure yet. Anyways, thanks for watching. Peace.